rewards. Is your heart today the heart that God rewards? I mean, you may have wandered away. You may feel lukewarm in your life. You may feel like, you know, I, I, I don't even know why I pray. I, I read God's word, but I just don't get anything out of it. That means you need to have another trip to the altar and say, God, I can't leave here until I get blessed, Lord. I want a blessing. I want rewards. It starts right now. Welcome to More on Christ. I'm Pastor Glenn Moore, where we're all about encouragement and everything. Well, it's all about Jesus, our Lord and Savior that promises abundant life. A life that God rewards. You know, the book of Hebrews in chapter 11, the faith chapter, faith is the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen. But in verse 6, it says, It is impossible to please God without faith. And he that cometh to God must believe that God will reward him. A rewarder. God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. He's a rewarder. Hallelujah. He is a rewarder, and he's got rewards for you. They're waiting on you. Now, people think all the time, how can I get a reward from God? Well, that's not that difficult. Absolutely not that difficult. Rewards. You've got rewards coming your way. What will he reward? We'll talk about that. What will I have to change in my life to get rewards? We'll talk about that. So really, what happens in life is that God will bring fire upon our life and burn out the things of the flesh... You know, we have three enemies, the flesh, the world, and the devil. And he'll burn out those things in our life that are fleshly so that we can get more rewards from our wonderful Father in heaven who wants to give us rewards. So rewards are an amazing thing. Rewards are all around us in this day and time. The bottom line is this. Rewards are there for you. God wants to bless you. And he'll take that fire and burn things out of your life that are not pleasing to him or holding you back or hindering you, and you'll be in a perfect place to receive all the rewards. That's why the fire of the Holy Spirit is so important in our life. Now, why does it matter? Well, it matters because the more rewards you get, the more you talk about the Lord and tell everybody, you know, I'm just getting blessed all the time. God just keeps pulling up the dump truck, lifting it up, and I'm getting all the rewards. And I'm going to spend all my time saying, Lord, reward me. I want to do what you want me to do all the time. God is always a loving father. He wants to bless us. So Abraham, he obeyed God and God made him the father of many nations. Jacob wrestled with God and wouldn't let him go until he got a blessing. In other words, he was rewarded by God for wrestling with him. Joseph spent time in the dungeon and God rewarded him by making him the second most highest in Egypt. David David took care of all the sheep of his father. And God looked and said, we've been having an intimate time. We're having such a great time. I know you'll do what I ask you to do. So I'm going to reward you and make you the next king of Israel. And he did. So seeking is pursuing. Seeking is hunting. Seeking is exploring. When you seek, you search. When you lost your keys and you need your keys real quickly, you search all over the house. That's seeking. You seek real well. You turn the house upside down to find those keys. Jesus gave a parable about the woman that was looking for the precious coin. Turn the house upside down. That's seeking. So when we turn everything upside down, say, Lord, I want my reward. Let's pray that right now. Father, I want my rewards, and I'm going to pay the price to get those rewards in Jesus' name. Amen. And Lord, open my eyes and my ears and my heart that I may hear what you're saying so I can get started on the best part of my life, getting rewards from my family, getting rewards from my my sons and daughters and my grandchildren, and the great rewards of salvation. It's a gift, but they got to have their eyes open. So, Father, bless us today and open our eyes and our heart and our spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. So one father talked about he used to play hide-and-seek with his kids. And he said, you know, it was great to go and hide from them, but I didn't hide in such places that they couldn't find me. I hid in places where they could find me. And it was a fun game, and they were always excited to play it. Now, you know God does the very same thing. 
There's a hide and seek that goes on with God. When God reveals, he is blessing us. When he hides, he is building us. He is strengthening us. And when we meet with him in the secret place, we are on our way to great rewards. God wants to bless us. Now, you know everybody today, every company, almost every company, every store on earth says, sign up for our rewards. You know, I'm signed up everywhere. I get this, I get that, I get free this, I get free that. And I'm looking at my rewards and, oh, we've got to get more rewards. Rewards are very important. Look at all the companies. All the companies are offering rewards. Bed, Bath & Beyond, Best Buy, CBS, Dick's Sporting Goods, Home Depot, JCPenney. Everybody is offering either Kohl's dollars or Kohl's coupons. Everybody's offering that. And there's a lady on the internet called Breathe the Coupon Queen. And she says, if you follow these things, you can save at least $1,200 this year by getting these coupons. And then all of us that hold credit cards, you know, they offer us miles and all this and that airline miles. I had friends, they flew all around the world into different places on credit card miles. And one of the things that they've talked about is that about 69% of people holding credit cards never get the value of what they've got. It's sitting there. It's waiting on them for them to cash in and get returns of dollars on their, on their account or to go someplace or to rent a car for the day. It's there, but they don't, they don't access it. So God is saying, well, I've got greater rewards than all of that. I can beat all of those companies. And he says, just draw near to me and I'll draw near to you. I will reward you when you diligently seek after me. When you hunt, when you search, when you explore, I've got rewards that makes all of these other companies on earth just look like pennies. I've got dollar rewards. I've got a huge amount of rewards for you. So let's get busy and ask God to bless us and go sit with him and he'll begin to speak to you in the prayer time in your secret place. Now, God has a better reward of everything. He's got salvation. He's got the most amazing financial plan for you. Now, that requires faith. Faith is required to access and have the blessing of his great financial plan that's greater than any financial plan on this earth. He pays back amazing returns on your investment. He's got health benefits. By his stripes we are healed. He's got eternal benefits. When you accept Jesus as your Savior and all your sin debt is washed away in the blood of Jesus Christ who hung on the cross and shed his blood for you and me. And at the end he said, Father, it is finished. I've accomplished the work. He said, I forgive everyone. I don't hold anybody in unforgiveness. So you're blessed. And all you have to do is access and you've got eternal rewards that are never going to end. God has a plan for you that is simply amazing. So I have this great story I want to talk to you about. Now, you know, in Matthew 6, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, righteous ways. And then all of these things, all of these rewards will be added to your life. Rewards are great and awesome. But let's talk about one of the richest men ever to ever walk the planet. And he had this amazing company. He got all of the people together, and he didn't have just a company. He built an empire. And he had offices everywhere. Well, he had amassed such wealth. He thought, well, you know, it's time for me to really enjoy all this, so I need a CEO. And he went searching, and people went searching to help him find this CEO. And a lot of people, well, they had a lot of people that they said, this guy, is the, he has the pedigree. This guy has graduated and got all the, the pedigree papers. He's got, he's got a BA. He's got a master's. He's got a doctorate. He's got it all. Well, he looked and he said, well, that's, that's great, but I'm looking for a special kind of person. So he picked the most unlikely candidate. And everyone went, say what? Well, we would have never picked that guy. He said, yeah, but I know what's in the heart. So he picked a man, and he said, I'm going to entrust you with all of this stuff. This candidate was, was a good candidate, but he had some insecurity issues, and, and, the, and the owner said, ah, we can work on that. We can, we can work with that. He had some amazing characteristics. He was obedient. He was respectful. He was polite. He was modest. So he was kind of a teachable guy. He had some humility. He was teachable. Everything was great. And so the owner said, you're going to be the man. He said, and any kind of help 
that you need, I, I will provide it. I'll get you the right people around you and get you polished to do everything I want you to do. So he thought, okay, I'll take on this new job. And he got the highest floor with all the great offices. He got all the benefits. He got it all. He got the cars. His family now was living at a brand new level they had never lived at. I mean, they had people that were waiting on them. This was new in his life. He had people serving him. What do you need? I can get it for you. Every, we have everything available. And all he really had to do was just listen to the owner. And if he listened to the owner, everything would go great. And he was a Christian. He went to church. And he met often with his pastor and got some pointers. And the pastor said, listen, all you have to do is do exactly what the owner wants you to do. And you'll be blessed beyond any man's thoughts or vision. You'll have it all. Just keep focused on what the owner wants you to do and keep serving God and you'll get it all. So he would counsel with him here and there and, and he stayed focused. He was the chief executive officer of the whole empire. Everything was going great and this amazing new lifestyle and the wife was like, oh, this is great. This is awesome. God has blessed us and the children were blessed and they were going to new schools and it was great. They had memberships to all kinds of clubs and they were just excited. So things were going pretty good, except one day, one day the owner had a new vision for the empire, the company. He said, I, I got a vision for you. And he gave his goals to the CEO and he said, okay, I'll, I'll do exactly what you want me to do. And he got out there, and he, he was out there in the middle of it, and he talked to his pastor before he went out on this mission. He said, just do exactly, just do exactly what the owner wants you to do. And it's going to go well with you. Now, you may get into a, a tough situation. You may get into a crisis of faith there, and you must always do what the owner wants you to do. He's the one that has power over your life, not anybody else. The CEO said, okay, that sounds good to me. If I do these things, I'll get blessed. Well, when he went on the mission, it became a crisis of faith. What looked very easy, he began to second guess and think and have doubts and worries. And, and then the employees kind of had a little bit of an uprising saying, you're missing it. We got to get this done. We got to do this. We got to meet these demands. You know, in life... The only demand that you really need to meet is God's demands. Come to the prayer closet. That's one way you get the rewards. That's one of the ways. You say, well, I'm not very good at praying. Just go and sit and wait and say, I'm here for you, Lord. Turn some worship music on. Open up the Bible. That's when the rewards will start happening. Well, he got into this crisis of faith, and you and I get into it. And the Bible tells us in Proverbs 3, don't lean to your own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge God. So the CEO began to get pressured, and he just got confused, and he, he thought, well, i got to get this done. It's not really my job, and I'm going to do it anyway because all these guys are, are starting to leave, and I, I don't want to lose all the people in my organization. So he went ahead and did something that the owner didn't approve of. So the owner confronted him and said, that's not what I asked you to do. I did not ask you to do that. That was on your own character. You, you were very impatient, and you didn't stay focused on the goals that I give you. You got focused on the goals of your lower managers, but I want you focused on my goals. So he said, continue on. I'm not pleased with you, but continue on. Well, one crisis of faith leads to another crisis of faith. And then all of a sudden there was a hostile takeover on this company. And now the, the CEO was really sweating bullets, but the hostile takeover looked terrible. They had a computer genius on their side that could do send out viruses on their company, confuse everybody. They did a campaign, a media campaign, email campaign. They did it all, and they were about to take over this great company that had an empire, the offices around the world, the products were great, uh, customer base was great, everything was flowing, everything was flowing. But now this other company had gathered some other companies to ally with them, and they had all decided, we're going to bring this company down. And the owner said, we're going to bring you down, and we're going to buy you off. We're going to drop your stocks in the dirt. They're not going to be worth anything. We're taking over, and there's nothing you can do about it. He, he wasn't meeting with the pastor. He wasn't talking to God too much, and he wasn't, well, he wasn't talking to the owner of the company. He said, listen, I'll do anything you want me to do. I'll do, I'll do whatever you want me to do. And that's what we should say to God. Lord, show me what to do, and I will do it. I am your servant. I will do what you show me to do. I want the rewards. I want your blessing. I want to live that amazing life that you called me to live, the abundant life that Jesus talks about in John chapter 10. 
So things were happening. They weren't, they weren't good. The owner's favor had evaporated on the CEO. I mean, he had, he had everything, but things were, there was distance there. There was some unhappiness on both sides. And the CEO was in a great panic, a greater crisis of faith than the first time. So he began to get real depressed. He's sweating bullets. He's desperate. He's worried about everything, about losing everything that he had gained in the promotion. He's worried about losing everything. And he's worried about what his family's going to lose. And he didn't look well. He looked really disheveled. And I mean, he looked tormented. And he met with his managers and said, what are we going to do? This, this looks like we're going to be wiped out, completely wiped out. We're going to lose everything. We're all going to be on the soup line. It's all going to be bad. We'll be lucky to get jobs. And all the employees are starting to panic, and they're wondering what's going to happen. We've, we've invested our life with you. So they, they got together, and they thought, we've got to get a master plan here. We've got to come up with something. So they come up and they said, we've got to find somebody, somebody that knows how to take care of this. So they offered these amazing rewards. They said, whoever can defeat this takeover and make it go away. We're going to give you houses and homes and vacation homes. We're going to give you the top office up in the top of this great huge skyscraper up where the CEO is. We're going to put you right up there. You're going to have it all. And well, we'll, we'll introduce you to the, uh, the nice scene out there and get you connected with the right people. And, and they thought that would bring some people said, I can do all that. And nobody showed up. Because they knew if they failed, it would be the end of everything. And they, and they weren't confident about this, so nobody, nobody volunteered. Nobody. And they said, nobody? Nobody's coming. Well, he, he got real panicked, and it got worse. The torment was worse on him. He was, he was needing a lot of help. And they said, you know, he's in such a state of depression. and why his, He doesn't even look like the guy that, we, that was hired here. He, he looks so disheveled. His beard's grown out. He, he, he's just in a bad place. And I think the only thing that can comfort him is music. So they, they said, does anybody know of anybody in the company that can really is gifted in music? And somebody said, well, I got, a, I got this, this, uh, uh, this little brother of mine. He, that's what he does, and I'll bring him. So they brought this little brother in, and he said, okay. And so he just sit in the office with him of the day, and he, and he played his guitar. And that comforted the CEO. He began to feel some relief, and uh, his eyes began to come back to life. The zombie look was gone. Hope began to rise. He began to feel better. He began to think, well, maybe not all is lost. Maybe something can happen. And he began to think God might just do something for him on this situation. And so the managers rushed in and they said, look, this thing is going to come real soon on this hostile takeover. We've got to do something. They keep on banging on the walls and our customer base is evaporating and our stock's beginning to fall. Things don't look good. What are we going to do? And they thought, we've done, we, we put out a massive reward, and, and even the CEO says, and he can meet my daughter. You know, I'll introduce him to my daughter. You know, she's an amazing young woman. I'll introduce him to her. And they, we well, can't find anybody who wants to do it. And finally, the, the young upstart musician, he said, so well, you got a problem. Well, what's the problem? And they, they told him all about it. He said, well, I can take care of that. They said, you can, and they laughed at him. He said, you don't know what you, 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 you've, why you, what is, what do you, how do you know you can take care of it? He says, I take care of my dad's business. That's how I know. And I've had these situations before of hostile takeovers on a lower level, and I dealt with them. I know, I know exactly what to do. And they thought, oh, really? Okay, give it your best shot, finally. And the Lord be with you, the CEO said, well, the Lord be with you. <laughs> You're it. So he says, show me to your supercomputer. And they took him to the office of the supercomputer, and he said, step back. I don't need all of you around me. I don't work that way, so I'll let you know when things happen. So he got busy on that supercomputer, and, he, and he, the first thing he did was send a virus over to the opposing companies, and he put up firewalls to stop the other companies, and then he began to send out emails to everybody. He sent things out to the media. He began to correct things. In fact, he sent and exposed all their evil deeds, and he sent it to the high authorities in the land, he talked to the lawyers and said, this is what's going to happen. And he spoke to that one guy that was the computer devious guy that was charging the company. He said, I got your number, and I'm going to totally exhaust everything. When I'm finished with you, well, you're not going to be able to get a job down at Nancy's Diner. That's exactly what's going to happen. So all of a sudden, things started happening. Everything started reversing. 
within hours. And he walked out and he said, it's done. He said, it's done, it's over with, victory has taken place, and you're back on top. Everything's going to take place. Now you can buy their company on a fire sale because their stock is plummeting even now as I'm talking to you. So you can go in and buy all their companies, and your empire is going to expand. The Lord bless you there, CEO. I got to go. He said, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. We got some rewards. He said, I didn't do it for the rewards. I didn't do it for anything. I did it because I love my God. And he gives me dreams, and he gives me ideas on how to do things on this computer. He gives me amazing information. He gives me insider information that I use to give him glory. So I didn't do it all for your rewards. I came to do it for my God. Yeah, okay, that's fine, but we got this new office for you. He said, okay. And they've been, they, they began to celebrate all over the office. They threw a party that was amazing. I mean, the party went on for days, and they were celebrating him, and the, the ticker tape was happening, the the people were just toasting. Everyone said, oh, it's great. We're back in the high life. Everything is okay. You don't have to worry anymore. It's secure. Now we really have accomplished and established the empire. We have no competitors, and we have the whiz kid, and he knows God, and God will bless him in all that he does. You see, that's the way God is in your life. He wants to give you insider information. Now, who was that story about, you might say? Well, who was that story all about? Well, I want to tell you exactly who that story was all about. I just brought it up and modernized that story. But God says seekers take risk. They don't count the cost. They want one thing. They're after one thing, the reward. Seekers are not afraid to test things. They're not afraid to say, Lord, use me and take me to wherever you have to take me. Use me, Lord. I want to be used by you. Seekers go to the extreme in their faith. Seekers get down on their knees and say, God, show me what to do. I'll do it, God. If you want me to speak to my next door neighbor, Lord, give me some thoughts and, I'll, and open the doors. And I'll just go right in and I'll give them the word of God. So teach me, Lord. Show me how to live in the rewarded life. A life that God rewards. You know, everything in your life counts. Everything that you do counts. God is watching. God says, I really want to reward you with everything. Well, the person that we're talking about today is King Saul and David, the future king of Israel. In 2 Samuel 17, you can find many things there and read about it. David came in and he ministered to Saul in music, and he was comforted. Saul was no longer stressed out. He kind of got, whew, I'm about to lose everything here. He said, if these Philistines take us over, we're finished. We'll be their slaves. Those of us who survive, those of us who are not killed in battle, will be their slaves. And this giant, it's 10 feet tall, 9 to 10 feet tall. Who can defeat this guy? Well, the story goes on like this. What David said was overheard and reported to Saul. So David was saying, what happens to the man that goes out and kills this Philistine? And then his brothers jumped on him and said, who do you think you are? You can't defeat that guy. He says, I don't need your opinion. And that's the focus. He says, I need what God has. And so Saul brought him up. And he responded to David, you can't fight this Philistine. You're just a boy. He's been a warrior since he was your age. And David re replied to Saul in 1 Samuel 17, I am a shepherd for my father's sheep. Whenever a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it, and rescued the sheep from its mouth. If it attacked me, I took hold of its mane, struck it, and killed it. In other words, the first thing was, you're warned, move on. But the, when the lion came after me, he says, that's the end of you. You're done. I have killed lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine ha, will be like one of them because he has challenged the army of the living God, the empire, the greatest company on earth that had the living God as the owner. God is the owner. Is God the owner, is God the owner of you today? Have you given your life to Jesus Christ? Have you had all your sins washed away? Because that is the first step to get rewards with God. That's the first step. So all you have to do is say, I agree with God. I have sinned. Oh, Lord, I've sinned. I know it. I, I mean, I'm boss of my life, and I'm not doing any good. And God says, i got a great plan for your life. I, didn't, I, I birthed you. I had a plan before you were born on this earth to do amazing things. B means I believe that Jesus did all of these things, went to the cross, and gave his life 
And the blood washed away all my sins. Now that takes faith to believe that. So by faith we are saved through Jesus Christ and we have nothing to brag about. Jesus did all the work. C means I confess that I choose Jesus as my Savior. I confess him as Savior. And I choose him as Lord of my life. See, many of us choose Jesus as Savior, but then we're still Lord of our lives. We don't listen to God calling the shots. We do what we want to do. One Sunday school teacher said one time, and I missed it. My dad said, did you hear that quote? I didn't hear the quote. What was the quote? He said this, sinner or saint, we do what we want to do. So if you want rewards, you're going to have to have God use the Holy Spirit fire and burn out this flesh man, this flesh woman that controls your life and say, Lord, control my every day. I want all the rewards that you have for me. And that'll be the life that God rewards. So David, he tried on Saul's armor. He says, I, I can't wear this armor. I can't, I can't go out to battle like this. Let me do what I always do. So he said, okay, go and be blessed. So David took his stick with him picked out five smooth stones from the riverbed and put them in his shepherd's bag. With a sling in his hand, he approached the Philistine. The Philistine, preceded by the man carrying his shield, was coming closer and closer to David. When the Philistine got a good look at David, he despised him. After all, David was a young man with a healthy complexion and good looks. The Philistine asked David, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks and stones to attack me? When I have a javelin and a great big shield, he says, you don't have a chance. I'll feed your carcass to the birds of the air. And David told the Philistine, now David gave him a speech. David says, you come to me with a sword and spear and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies and earth's armies, the God of the army of Israel, whom you have insulted. God ain't happy. And God's always been with me. And he showed me how to use all these weapons. So let's get ready. In other words, let's go. And so, today the Lord will hand you over to me. I will strike you down and cut off your head. And this day I will give the dead bodies of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals. The whole world will know that Israel has a God. Then everyone gathered here will know that the Lord can save without sword or spear. Because the Lord determines every battle's outcome. He will hand all of you over to us. When the Philistine moved closer in order to attack... David quickly ran toward the Philistine. And then David reached into his bag, took out a stone, put it in the sling, and he let it go. And it hit the Philistine right there. Knocked him out. He hit the ground. The the, the stone's still there. I mean, that was a great velocity. And God made sure. I've trained you in the wilderness. We've had an intimate relationship. Now I'm going to reward you. And David rushes upon him and cuts his head off right there. And the whole Philistine army, they said, if, well, if you've got a champion, we'll, we'll serve you from now on. We'll be your servants. Uh-uh. They all started running for the hills, and the army of God was chasing on them. And that day, David won a mighty battle. And Saul said, well, who is this? And Abner, his great general, said, that's the son of Jesse, your servant. He said, bring him to me. We're going to celebrate him. And they carried him through the streets on their shoulders. He has won the battle. He is great. Well, David went on to greater rewards in his life. He, he married the king's daughter. And, he, and David had a great time serving the Lord. And a great internship learning how to be a king. It took him about 10 to 12 years of leading men. That's what it takes in leadership. And he was rewarded greatly in his life. He was rewarded tremendously because he stayed focused on God. His heart was exactly the heart that God rewards. Is your heart today the heart that God rewards? I mean, you may have wandered away. You may feel lukewarm in your life. You may feel like, you know, I, I, I don't even know why I pray. I, I read God's word, but I just don't get anything out of it. That means you need to have another trip to the altar and say, God, I can't leave here until I get blessed, Lord. I want a blessing. I want rewards. It starts right now. Here's the things you have to do. The application points. Number one. It's time to go to the secret place. Because Jesus said, listen, when you go to the secret place, we're going to reward you. And Jesus doesn't lie, neither does God. And we'll reward you in the open. It may take a week or two of spending two hours a day, one hour, three hours, as long as you want. The, more longer, the longer you stay in the secret place, the more the rewards begin. The more they flow towards you. Now, this is a guarantee. God says in Hebrews eleven six. I will reward those who diligently seek me. 
who search for me, who risk everything, who are not distracted by anything in the world, and their focus is on me to do my will because I've got a lot of jobs for you. I've got a lot of missions for you to go on. Just around your neighborhood, there's people you need to meet that I want to meet. And you're the one I've chosen. So you're the person. So say, Lord, I am your servant, and I am here. I want the rewards, Lord, but I want to bless you. I want to reach as many people as I can before you come. I want to reach as many as I can, Lord. I want to get crowns and rewards, but I want the rewards now. So the more time you spend in the closet, the greater the rewards get. The more time you spend in this book searching for all the gold in here, all the nuggets, and hiding those words in your heart that you might not sin against God, well, all those things help us as well. The more time you spend in fellowship with the saints and hear their testimonies, how they did it, what God did in their life, the more you go, wow, if God can do it in your life, he can do it in my life. So they begin to seek God, seek God. This is a week of searching for God. So today, it's time for you to say, I want a do-over. I, I, I want a fresh start in my life. When you go into your prayer closet with your Bible, I promise you that God will begin to bless you in ways you've never imagined. Don't hurry out and say, well, I think I've been in there for two hours and look at your clock. Just ten minutes? Once you begin to stay in the prayer closet and time doesn't matter, now you're in the greatest part of the secret place. He will reward you amazingly. And then he's going to give you some action steps. I want you to go talk to so-and-so. I want you to pray for so-and-so. I want you to prepare the, the, the ground and break it up so you can plant the gospel seed. So God's wanting to use you and give you all kind of rewards so you can brag on him and tell everybody about how great he is. Let me tell you what God did for me last week. Really? God did something for you? I don't, I don't even believe in God. Well, let you, maybe you will after I tell you this great story. Because my God always does the impossible. And he always rewards me with all the things that I need. He gives me the inside scoop. And God wants to bless you. You're special to him. And he's just ready to give you all kind of rewards. Just like the person said, 69% of the people don't use their credit card rewards. So they're there waiting. All they have to do is access them. God is waiting for you in the secret place. So it's time this week to say, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to really make a greater effort. I'm going to turn off the TV. I'm going to skip a meal here or there, and I'm going to say, God, I want to learn how to please you in every part of my life. From this point on, I want all the rewards you have. This I pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week and get your rewards. They're awaiting on you.